all right welcome back everyone so in this video as you guys can probably read the title we're gonna be solving the navier stokes equation for flow in a pipe and we're gonna have we have a newtonian fluid in the pipe by the way <clears throat> you can only apply navier stokes equation for newtonian fluids okay it does not work for non-newtonian fluids by the way and uh, yeah the flow is being driven by pressure gradient as you guys as I've written here okay so you have to when you're solving uh, problems using Navier Stokes equation it is a uh, it's a good practice to figure out what is causing the flow the flow can be caused by gravity the flow can be caused by an applied pressure or the flow can be caused by sh uh, shear I link uh, dr. Victor Ugaz's video in the description in which he talks about that so okay um let's see i'm just gonna list uh list my assumptions before i head up so my assumptions are gonna be steady state of one of my assumptions of course is gonna be a uh, steady state <coughs> okay one of our f okay so steady state and we're gonna have laminar flow laminar flow very good and our fluid is obviously gonna be incompressible Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So with that said, with that kept in mind, let's move on. So every time you're solving the Navier-Stokes equation, you always have to start off with the continuity equation. Okay, continuity equation. <clears throat> so steady state. Okay, we're starting off with steady state. So that means that the transient terms are gonna go away. And if you can see in the pipe, if you can see in the schematic here, we only have velocity in the z direction. <clears throat> okay? There is no velocity in the r direction and there is no velocity in the theta direction. So we have unidirectional flow, only velocity in the axial direction. <clears throat> okay, so that means, so that means I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna get rid of u. Vr is equal to zero. And I'm going to get rid of u. V theta is equal to zero. And voila. This is the only thing that survives. And all right. So upon simplification, this is what I'm going to get. Okay. And this just means that uh, this partial derivative being equal to zero. That just means that the velocity in the z direction is not is not a function of z all right keep that in mind velocity in the z direction is not going to be a function of z which means that if i pick velocity at this point and i pick velocity at this point i should observe no change because the velocity is not changing in the z direction all right and obviously i'm going to be using this result i'm going to be using this result when I solve the Navier-Stokes equation. All right. Moving on to the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. Um, the Navier-Stokes equation, just to give you guys a refresher, it's just a uh, it's just a statement of f equals ma. It's just a Newton's second law statement for fluids. So, if I were to actually uh, make simplified for you guys in plain words, on the left side we just have mass times acceleration okay per volume these entire terms and on the right side i have all the forces i have all the forces i have my pressure gradients i have my viscous effects and i have force due to gravity okay so on the right side i have forces and on the left side i have mass times acceleration per volume. So everything is per volume, of course, if you wanna work out the units. And uh, so we have the Navier-Stokes equation for the R component, the theta component, and the Z component. All right, steady state by, hold up, sorry. Steady state, which means that I'm gonna get rid of you. I'm gonna get rid of you. I'm gonna get rid of you. Why did I do that? Steady state. All right. So 
I don't have velocity in R and theta. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. I don't have velocity in R. Let's see. Ooh, bye bye. Ooh, bye bye. Ooh, bye bye. Oh, you you get to survive for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Uh, do I see a VR term somewhere else? There, there, and there. All right, all right, and there, and somewhere else. No, that's good. <clears throat> and so v theta is equal to zero that's why i cancelled all of these uh, vr vr terms sorry vr is equal to zero that's why i cancelled all those terms next step next step v theta is also equal to zero bye bye Ooh, i'm gonna look for you guys bye 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 Oof, this is fun. Uh, oh, there you go. Sneaky bastard. Bye-bye. And, yep, that's it. <clears throat> so, our main equation. So, if there were, where you're, you're going to have three components. And the component that's going to be the most important is the one in which you're going to have flow. So, we have flow in the z direction so that's going to be our primary focus okay so let's just um see what do we have in the z direction okay and uh, i'm just gonna write it let's see what i have so far all right um let's see one over r partial derivatives one over r squared so before i um cancel out some terms i want to just show you guys something okay <clears throat> <clears throat> let's go one by one <clears throat> let's go on one by one so i can i'm gonna get rid of this term why because that's where i'm gonna that's the result i got from my continuity equation so this also goes away make sure you're reasoning out make sure you're reasoning out before canceling every term all right what else <clears throat> oh and this is also gonna go away because the derivative of vz with respect to z is zero <clears throat> and we don't have gravity in the z direction all right <clears throat> what about this term <clears throat> excuse me now this term is gonna go away because of symmetry just think about it intuitively if you have a pipe Okay, if you have a pipe, just think of now, this is where your intuition is going to come in. Imagine you have a pipe. Okay, fluid is flowing in. Would it, would it make sense if fluid was, if the velocity was different at this point than this point? Okay, if there was a velocity difference, that would uh, lead to momentum transfer. Okay, so at there is it's just not possible to have a, when you have axial flow it's just not possible to have differences it's just not possible to have differences in the axial velocity with respect to theta so at different angles you can't have different velocities symmetry symmetry in theta direction to be exact all right with that said, let's see what do we have. Zero is equal to negative All right. Oops. I it's kinda hard to keep track of the algebra sometimes. All right, 
So let's see. Can we get rid of this term? Can we get rid of this term? All right. Let's uh, go back for a second and see. Obviously, I don't have I don't have uh, gravity in the direction, and I don't have gravity in the theta direction. So that means that from the first equation, this is my result, and from the second equation, this is my result. So that means that pressure is not a function of pressure is not a function of r and pressure is not a function of theta okay but uh, what about what about z as i go back to the problem as i go back to the problem we have an applied pressure gradient we have an applied pressure gradient all right and that means that the pressure at the inlet is different than the pressure at the outlet <clears throat> so this means that we cannot we cannot get rid of this term we cannot get rid of this term all right so let's see let's see what happens now we're gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna talk some mathematics with you guys all right on the left side on the left side I have everything in terms of everything is an expression of Z on the right side everything is an expression of R okay on the left side everything is an expression of Z and on the right side everything is an expression of R how is that possible well this is only possible this is only possible mathematically if both of them are equal to a constant that means that dp dz is equal to a constant and mu times mu over r ddr r dvz dr is also equal to the same constant all right equal and this is only possible the left side an expression of z and the right side an expression of r that is only possible when both sides are equal to a constant and dp dz what is the physical significance of this term once again it's the pressure gradient guys it's the pressure gradient delta p over l delta p over l there we go it was the pressure gradient all along Bravo. So, our final ordinary differential equation after so much struggle is going to be mu over r ddr r dvz dr is equal to the pressure gradient. Okay, a second order ODE once again. A second order ordinary differential equation. How nice. And how many boundary conditions are we going to need? We're going to need two boundary conditions. Yay. And so, yeah, boundary condition one. Boundary condition one is going to be at r equals zero. There is going to be no flux at r equals zero there's going to be no flux we talked about this in the previous videos in curved coordinates at the center all the fluxes are going to cancel out which means that the gradient is going to be equal to zero and boundary condition two is going to be at r equals the radius capital r the radius of the pipe vz is going to equal zero and why is that no slip because the velocity the fluid in contact with solid is going to have the same velocity as the solids and obviously the pipe walls are stationary right no slip um no flux oops and i'll see you guys in the next part of this video where we perform the integration and wrap this up all right thank you so much for sticking till this point